Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Wilson. I'm going to make a quick video here as I get ready to have lunch, um, um, working from home as um, today teachers are doing that. Well, it is a uh, day off for you, Monday, and um, it is snowing, <laughs> so we are working from home. So I wanted to make this very short video for any of my remote students to watch just to review a few things related to my expectations and what you should be doing as a remote student for me this semester or year as your art teacher. Okay, so first of all, I really enjoy everybody's effort in seeing your work, and I appreciate everybody's um, attempts to try their best at home, as this year is complicated for everybody, and um, I, uh, I appreciate that. So to the point, though, what I want to make sure you realize is, is two, are two things. One, you are expected to attend the Zooms, and it is a school rule that when you check in, at least for a few minutes, you turn your screen on so that we can identify who is in our class. It's just one of those situations. You may realize this, but uh, I have 700 students almost, and I use one Zoom for all of my students, K through eight. So it's also really important that you understand that that is part of that reasoning. Second, if your camera doesn't work, I think you might need to get your family to discuss that problem with somebody in the school district that handles the technology and getting those devices to you. Because I don't understand that. If you have been given a device because your family has chosen to keep you remote, I am under the impression that you need a device that works in both the way to take video, to stream, to show video and have audio so that we can hear you. As a teacher, I'm using a school device. And if my device last year when we were remote had no camera, I, I think I would have been required as a teacher to find a device that works or to figure out what's going on. Again, I'm not quite sure about all those aspects and maybe it has to do with internet access and connection problems. But um, I encourage you to explore finding out why your video doesn't work, if that's the case. And if that is the case, I still need you to understand that because art is visual and we use our eyes to see it and create it, I do need to see your work. So that brings me to my next point. For some people in class, particularly 7th and 8th grade, I have learned that people are not super interested in sharing their work and maybe it's because you're not done with it or you would rather wait and share it with me individually. The great thing is, is I have email access, as you know, and you can always take photographs and share your work with me that way. But just realize that on a weekly basis, I create at least one grade on PowerSchool to give you a grade if you are a seventh and eighth grader. And I really need to see your work. If you're somebody that you look into power school and see that you have no grade, that is an indication that you have not been sending me any images of your work and I cannot find them. Um, I have a lot of people who contact me via email, but I always make sure I check that email every day of work, at least between those work hours from 8 to 3.30. I do try to take a break on the weekends. And I encourage you to do the same if you can. But I wanted to make sure that is clear. Now, I'm up to almost four minutes, and I just want to make sure that that is clear. So, one, you are expected to attend the Zooms, at least for sure, for those first 15 minutes to check in, turn your screen on before I let you go get creative. And then you should also be coming back at the end to check in. It's more like check in, check out. The other thing is, is if you don't turn your screen on because you can't, Try to figure out if a family member who's an adult can help find out what's going on. And the third thing is your work does need to be shared with me somehow. The truth is, is taking a photograph and emailing me those photographs works out best because I can see the detail. I can really give you ideas. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. Ideas to create art. As your art teacher and as somebody who is also an artist, 
I think it's really important for you to understand as young adults that I want you to create your own work. And I want to be more of a coach that guides you with ideas and gives you tips on techniques and shows you a variety of ways to make art, learning about art individually to try to get you to make art that you enjoy making and just keep going. At this point, if you are a seventh and eighth grader, I am still considering your class to be in what I call the exploratory stage. We have only had art class for four to five weeks. And even though we've had snow days that have kind of mixed up the continuity of coming to class and school, I really am noticing that there are a lot of kids that are still not aware of all of the techniques and media forms like watercolor, oil pastel, how to create interesting artworks with those media and drawing forms and ways to draw. And so if you are an in-class student or you come back to class, I'm structuring my lessons so that every time kids have class with me, I introduce a new technique and illustrate a new idea. And then I'm actually considered what's called a choice-based art educator, which means I always give a choice. And it could be as simple as, okay, I want you to make this portrait. You can use any type of drawing material you want. Or, okay, there's drawing materials, painting materials, sculpting materials. I would like you to go and choose one of those medias and create an artwork to get started. Um, sometimes that can be complicated because, as you know, the biggest problem for artists is, what do you want to make? Uh, and And being open to exploring your creativity sometimes by just creating work that is totally different than what you usually do is a great way to open up those ideas for you and, and to keep you moving as an artist. What's great is because most of you are individually emailing me photos of your work, I would like to start really talking to you on an individual basis, like I mentioned, like a coach, to kind of push you in directions that seem to be where you want to go and what you want to do and what you want to get better at. Please be direct with me. If there's something you really want to get better at, like Mrs. Wilson, I really want to get better at learning how to draw people. Tell me directly. Emailing me in that way is great because even if it's after hours, I do a little bit of work after school. We all do, you know, and I really care about you guys as students and artists. And I want to see some progression for you. I want to see growth for you as art students. I want you to learn as much as you can from my course, but I want your coursework and um, work that you create to be something that you like and something that you care about. Now, um, sometimes I find my glasses sort of like, glare up in the screen. So that's why I took my glasses off so I can see that it is pushing seven minutes. So as I'm just doing this little intro video on my YouTube channel, which is specifically for you to watch today, if you get this, I'm going to say when you show up to the Zoom, hey, and I'm going to ask you to stick around in the Zoom, but watch that video. Um, that is something that um, I, I'm making here today on purpose for you just to touch base about these things. One final note is that I've had a few people tell me things in the Zoom, like, I don't know what to make, or I didn't know what to make today. Okay. There are lots of things I add into the classwork sections, and I keep adding them. The classwork section of the Google Classroom is designed on my end to do things that aren't necessarily traditional like homework, but they're ideas there. There is a document of videos where I just have a whole Word doc that is you could scroll through that have videos of how to draw things. Then I'm going to add another section today that you'll find when you watch this after you watch it, go check it out. There's another selection of ideas that I'm going to put in a document that will be a classwork section that have to do with watching little snippets of videos to give you ideas of things you could create that are either three-dimensional, craft-oriented, or painting-oriented. And again, what I want you to start doing is explore what you have at home and your ideas of what you want to make. And if you're not sure what you want to make, I need you to tell me that. And I'll refer you to doing activities 
that the in-person students are directed to watch and to learn from. Because I do realize as a student of art, you are expecting the teacher to direct you to help you with those ideas. But you know, art is complicated. Because if you're like me, when I was your age, I always had my own idea. And if a teacher had me want, wanted me as a student to only do one activity and it wasn't something I was super interested in, I would have done it to get a grade. But typically when the class was over, when the project was done, I didn't care about wanting it back. And art is really important, I think, as an art teacher to explain to students that art is so super personal. It's really powerful. It can express really important ideas that are personal, that help you work through feelings and emotions. And it can also be a wonderful way to train yourself to get better at specific skills, simple as drawing or even more advanced activities that incorporate different media types that we haven't explored yet as a class. So keep up with watching those classwork section videos if you would like to explore your ideas. But as an artist working at home remotely, you have a really great advantage. You have the power to use what you have as an artist. And with our remote situation, I can try my best to teach you with videos online. I can try my best to teach you via Zoom. But Zoom is kind of complicated. Our internet cuts out. And I would rather you take advantage of that 82-minute block every art class and mostly make art. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I'm an artist, so I'm just going to wrap this up by saying, you know, I like to explore what's known as mixed media. I'm going to be talking about that today with our in-person people where I have all kinds of things that I make art with. Um, I have acrylic paint pens. They like work like paint, but they're a pen. I love using gel pens. Those are really fun. I also love using little like just regular pens that are, um, really, really nice, precise, permanent pens that have really nice fine tip. I like to work on things that are a little experimental. Like I have all of this photo paper that I've been making art with where I paint on it with um, watercolor. And then after it's dry, I scratch areas away and I build up layer upon layer with these types of things that I've just showed you, like my paint pens and stuff like that. And I don't always work on one piece. I, I go back and forth. But every artist does things a little differently. As I wrap this up, you may know my husband, Mr. Wilson. If you had him as an art teacher, he works a little differently. He likes to have this whole idea planned out from the beginning. There's just two different ways of thinking about it. You can be really exploratory. And this is a really good idea if you're telling me you don't know what to make. It's normal to feel that way. Sometimes you just get bored with one idea and you want to do something else. It's totally fine. Mr. Wilson, on the other hand, as I was going to mention before I wrap this video up, uh, is that, you know, you know, he has planned from the beginning. We're like, I want to make a fish. He loves to make tropical fish. He's just really into this. He's been doing this for years and he gets better at it because he just keeps doing it. And he will find an image of a fish on a computer, look at it, get a piece of watercolor paper, do a really quick sketch of the shape then sit for hours upon hours to just carefully paint his fish working with just watercolor. And he paints on his fish until the fish looks like the fish. That's two different mindsets. I think it's a really great way to go. I've worked like that before. I will tell you that I am not a realistic artist in comparison to Mr. Wilson. But remember that art styles are so varied and your art does not have to be realistic to be good. We have this problem that has kind of existed for centuries because of the history of art education or art of art that there's a lot of misconceptions that people still believe that art has to look real to be good but you have to question as i wrap this video up finally that asking yourself whether art is good or not is a total opinion-based question and as the artist you have to be in control of remembering what matters, what is good, and never compare your art to somebody else's art if that is not the route you want to go with your own style. Never compare yourself to an artist that you believe is super realistic if you don't like being realistic and tell yourself, I'm not as good as them. That is the hardest part, I think, for artists to understand. And I've had that happen to me as well. I've went into art shows where I've been in group shows. I've seen art around a wall and I feel really small because my art isn't as good as theirs.
But you have to ask yourself why you come up with those conceptions or ideas and, and really think about it is really hard to understand this. But as your art teacher, since you're a young adult, and I'm getting to teach you this year in this semester, think about it this way. The idea of whether art is good or not is totally opinion-based mindset. Don't hold yourself back from thinking you're not going to be good at something because you see somebody else's art and it's not where you are. You know, some people were impressed with my art. I'm in my 40s. I've been making art for a long time. You know, so make sure that you enjoy what you're making. Find something that interests you. And my advice to those of you who like to use computer programs is I think it's a really cool thing. I got to tell you that it's above me a little bit because I like to work by hand and I, the computers were not around when I was your age. You know that. However, I would balance your skills. And if you're using a drawing stylus on a computer, that makes sense that that is a lot like drawing. But uh, I would continue making sure you do a variety of activities and not just the computer program, especially if the computer program does not involve a stylus. If you're not drawing on a screen like a few of you have been doing, you may want to realize that if it's just where you're kind of clipping art or clicking buttons to just add amazing coloring and, and realistic shading and things. And I'm not trying to say the computer art isn't valid. I'm just saying that you may want to just balance the skills that you need to actually make an artwork that is not created with the computer. Because sometimes if you abandon that completely, what you find is your skills become less sharp. And that's, that's a really final good point to bring up. It is very easy for an artist to lose touch with their skills because they stop doing it. I'll compare it to something else I like to do for fun when I used to do it before the corona epidemic. Bowling. I used to be pretty good at bowling because I bowled every Friday night. And I don't bowl anymore because of everything going on with the virus. So I'm sure if I pick up that bowling ball of mine and go bowling, I'm not going to be very good at it. It just makes sense because I'm not real sharp on my skills. Okay. I know I talked for almost 20 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm a teacher. I hope that you continue to grow as an artist and realize that I am always here to talk to you. You do not have to leave the Zoom and go away. Please don't feel that way. It's just a little hard to multitask having kids in person and out of person. But feel free to come in and talk to me or chat with me. But if you don't realize that I don't hear you, it might be because you might have to turn on your volume and talk because I might not be right in front of the laptop right away all the time. Anyway, um, okay, that's it. So you're supposed to watch this <laughs> if you're a remote student because I just made this to, to keep up the work. Good work, guys. See you in the Zooms. Bye. Stay creative, people.